This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting squarespace.com babish. Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Anime with Alvin, where today I'll be taking on the challenge of making the blooming fish from a Chinese animation, Cinderella Chef. Now in the show, she calls it a squirrel fish, which is actually a real dish in Chinese cooking. But based on her preparation, this could either be squirrel fish or shanuhu yu, also known as coral fish, a slightly more difficult variation. And because I enjoy challenge, I will be doing the latter. Either way, the end result should be a beautifully fried and sauced fish that looks like it is blooming. This is an extremely difficult dish to prepare correctly, as it requires an extremely high level of taogong or knife skills from the chef. I have here a whole black sea bass, which I'm going to start by attempting to fillet this. This is my first time ever trying to fillet or butcher a fish, so a lot of mistakes will be made. Ow. After watching a few YouTube videos, I've gathered that filleting a fish usually begins by making incisions on the tail, sliding a thin knife, or a cleaver in this case, across the spine and towards the head. And I gotta say, people really make it look easy in the videos, like Gordon Ramsay filleting that huge salmon fillet, but this is hard. And usually at this point, I'd be feeling pretty nervous about this dish. But thankfully, Kendall managed to pick up some already filleted sea bass from the fishmongers themselves. You can clearly see that there's a huge gap between my knife skills and an expert fishmonger's knife skills. So, if you can, I suggest you ask your fishmonger to fillet your fish and debone it for you. And make sure to leave them a big tip. Now, onto the step that turns this into a blooming fish, the crosshatch pattern. This begins with the nearly impossible task of making an incision at around a 20 degree angle, less than a quarter inch thick, from the flesh all the way down to the skin, but not slicing through. This step now must be repeated across the entire fillet, with no flesh breaking and the knife staying steady the whole time you're cutting. And if any flesh rips or if the skin tears, that's an ugly mistake you can't fix. This dish is about literally exposing your gong for the world to see. I've watched a couple of videos about how to make the coral fish, and apparently, it gets even harder from here. One of those videos that I referenced is from a Chinese cooking channel called Wang Gang. He's actually made a really popular video about this exact same dish. And not surprisingly, his gong is magnificent, so I'm taking huge inspiration and instruction from his video for our dish. After I've done my best to cut the flaps across the fish, the next step is to cut thin strips out of each flap, starting from the base where the flesh attaches to the skin. This is actually more difficult than it seemed because at least the fish I'm using does not have very firm flesh, making it very easy to drag and tear. The thinner the strips, the more beautiful the end product, but also the more dangerous the risk of tearing becomes, which definitely happened a couple times. After I finish cross-hatching to the best of my ability, which took about like 30 minutes, I'm gonna give it a quick rinse in a water bath and press it dry with a towel. This helps clean the fish and also turn it into somewhat of a sponge for flavor and seasoning. Meanwhile, I'm heating up a wok full of oil to 350 degrees. Hello? Now that our fish has dried, I'm laying our fillets in a tray filled with a couple tablespoons of liaojiu, or cooking wine, and a tablespoon of salt. Marinating in cooking wine and salt is a common technique used in Chinese cooking to simultaneously season and counteract the pungency or fishiness from meat or fish. The important part here is to make sure that the marinade coats and touches every single strip in the fish fillets. The padded dry fish will take about 5 minutes to soak up that marinade, so I'll prepare the breading in the meantime. A 1 to 2 ratio of cornstarch and potato starch. Uh, might have gone a little overboard here, but hey, you know what they say, you can never have too much sand at the beach. And just like at the beach, it is important to get sand in every single crack and crevice whether you like it or not. I'm going to delicately try and push the starch into each strip of fish, attempting not to break it. I broke, I broke the fish. I hate the beach. After a stressful five minutes, our oil is up to temperature and our fish is ready to fry. This kind of looks like an accordion. This next step is very dangerous. The recipe calls for the fish to be held at both ends and slowly dipped into the hot oil, but held right above the oil so that the fish does not touch the bottom before it gets a chance to crisp up and solidify. If the fish is not held and dropped into the pan, the strips will hit the bottom and curl up, turning this into a curling fish, not a blooming fish. 
This means that your hands are in a lot of danger, so I have to legally tell you that you should not do this. But when your sixth sense tells you that the fish is ready to be dropped, you drop it, and watch before your very eyes as the strips start to bloom. Once the entire fish reaches a light golden brown, I'm taking it out, resting it on a rack, and repeating the same process with the other fillet, slowly submerging it into the hot oil, and just when I can't hold it anymore, oh, it broke. Uh, that's okay. I'll find a way to fix that. I always do. Once the fried fish fillets are taken out, I'm also frying the tail and the head. This is important to the final dish because not only does it serve as a presentation factor, but it also serves as a test to who at the table is badass enough to go for them. Once all the fish has been fried, it's important to work quickly on the sauce so that the fish does not get soggy. In a medium saucepan, I'm combining 300 grams of ketchup, 40 grams of white vinegar, 120 grams of sugar, and two teaspoons of kosher salt, stirring until it starts to reduce. Hey, why are you jumping at me? Once it's been bubbling for a while, I'm adding in a half a cup of water to dilute. And once the sauce has come back up to temperature, I'm adding in around two tablespoons of a cornstarch slurry, which is made by a one-to-one -one ratio of cornstarch and water used to thicken sauces in Chinese cooking. And to finish, two tablespoons of a neutral oil to add a beautiful glossy sheen to the sauce. Now, we gotta plate fast or the fish will not be crispy. Arranging the fillet side by side so that the blooming coral pattern faces upward, we're gonna also arrange the tail on one end and the head on the other so that any prospective diners know immediately that this is a fish dish. Not skipping a beat, we're pouring the sauce directly on top, trying to cover each crack and crevice with that beautiful red glaze. I actually didn't thin out my sauce enough. It should be a very thin sauce that barely clings to the fish. But hey, what can you do? I think the weight of my thicker sauce caused some of those fish strips to sort of fall, so we're gonna wrap this up pretty quickly. A few leaves of parsley, and I present to you my first attempt at the shanghu yu, or coral fish, from Cinderella Chef. A whole fish that has been cross-hatched, breaded, fried, and coated in a sweet and sour sauce. Clearly my knife skills leave a lot to be desired, but I gotta say, this is pretty fun to eat. You pull off a little french fry of fish that already has sauce on it, and you just put it in your mouth. And it tastes solid, like fried fish in a sweet and sour sauce. But if you want to watch an expert make this dish, I highly suggest you check out Chef Wang Gang's video. I mean, the way he does it, beautiful. His channel is filled with amazing and authentic Chinese cooking that I grew up with. So watching his videos is both inspiring and nostalgic at the same time. Peace. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase.